Uh, all right, number eighty-seven, The Exorcist. Top twenty-five, I, easy. I haven't, I haven't seen this one. Yeah, same here. See, I'm not gonna recommend it because it's a, it's a complicated movie. Like, legitimately, the horror only happens in like the last half an hour, but they establish the horror over such a long course, over the course of the movie, like. Like, it's not like those, like, these, oh, my God, these modern day movies where, like, oh, suddenly, you know, your head is spinning around. No, she starts acting weird, right? And mm-hmm. all these, like, weird things are happening, right? But the mother is an atheist. So she's like, this isn't happening. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then when she talks to a priest, the priests are like, no, what are you talking about? Don't be ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So they go through psych. So, like, you actually go through these individual scenes of her going through psych tests, of her going to the doctor, of her going to the mental asylum, of her doing all these different things. Oh, uh, some M-, the- M. Night Shyamalan type of treatment. Where exactly. It's, where- it's slow in the beginning, but yes, then it picks up. Uh, exactly. Right. And then before you know it, you know, people are dead and the story kind of ends. And you're like, bam, you're like, I, almost, I don't want to call it a vibe, but in a way, it's, it's atmosphere at its finest. It's a slow-paced thing where there's no... It's borderline, you know, the conjuring, like in conjuring, no one technically dies. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's thrilling. So you know what I, I mean? just want to say, like, yeah, I get what you're saying, uh, because conjuring is quite dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just want to say, I'm sure this was really something that was maybe unheard of or like it probably really changed the game in Hollywood because how yes. do you write demon possession? I don't yeah. think there was ever there's ever been demon possession like this before. Yes. And the girl probably really, really I'm sure it it probably got some rave at the Oscars because mm-hmm. some of the scenes that I've seen this like okay, I've never really seen this movie, but mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of copied scenes from this movie. Even Days of Our Lives did a storyline about Marlena being a demon possessed. Then it was a rip-off of the exorcist. You know what I mean? Yeah. But seeing like a character being able to walk on walls like Spider-Man and and stuff like that, vomiting, and it's... I don't know who can write stuff like that. That is insane. Yes, but the thing is, you have to remember something. It's so earned. That's the problem. It's that they earn it over time. These other movies, they're almost like... They feel rushed. Yes, or like exploitation. Like you're doing it for the action, for the jump scare, like The Nun and all these right. other garbage movies where they do this. Oh, they blow the loads. Yes. Where it's like, oh, the guy's going to be tense music. Oh, the person's by themselves. We know what's about to happen. None mm. of that happens in this movie. And the thing is, it's got, yeah, I'm going to quote M. Night Shyamalan, but it's got this like stickiness to it where um, it stays with you because it, it hits you with this atmosphere yeah. of realness of this maybe could yeah. happen to you. It's I think, it's, I think that's, the, that's the USP right there. It, it's quite traumatic. I think a lot of people might have been traumatized by this. Yes. And yeah. you have to remember something. It's not the first horror movie. And it's not the sh- most shocking horror movie. Again, I'm. Do you know what's funny? Have you guys ever listened to classic rock or classic old school metal, heavy metal? Uh, like old yeah. School? Do you know what's yeah, funny about it? it? Like Ozzy Osbourne what? and all these guys. It mm-hmm. sounds like R and B and jazz. Do you know what I mean? What? Compared to compared to the modern day of <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne sounds like an R and B singer. Like right. if you were to come out today, it would be smooth jazz. <laughs> but that's the things parents were scared of. Do you know what I mean? So right. it's weird to describe The Exorcist because right now it might seem oh, tame. Okay. But because of you. its because of its depth. It, no, I get you. Yeah. It's like if you were to show if you were to show someone the first Blade film mm. versus some of the stuff we're getting now, this mm. would be people would be like, this is a superhero movie? And it's so funny because the but, tech- hey Blade Blade be waxing some of the superhero movies that we got now. Oh, no, definitely. I agree. I agree oh, that's, with what, you. that's what he's saying. That's his point. Yeah. Yeah. My my point is because of the multiverses and like special effects, like prioritizing special effects over the story and all of that yeah. versus like something as simple as Blade One. Yeah, I mean, Blood would Bank be, would, would be tame. Stefan Dorf as uh, like Whistler and what's yeah. that guy's name? You're nothing to me but a dead vampire. Frost. Deacon yes, Frost. Deacon Frost, yes. It's it's great. But it's someone fantastic. would be like, this is boring. There's no there's no 
crazy special effects or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, what they, 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 they didn't. You did you, 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 You're forgetting the blood tornado. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I get you, but like stuff like Blade doesn't fly or there's no laser beam. Uh, it's unacceptable. I don't know. Stuff like that. With the yeah. slow motion, people wouldn't get bullet time. No, I, I'll put, I'll push back against that simply because stuff like Daredevil exists and Daredevil doesn't do anything fantastical like that. But so that's, that's, that's an you're exception. You're proving our point, basically. That's it's an like, exception that proves the rule. Stop, stuff like Daredevil. When you see it, when you were to, show, if you were to show someone, and they'll be like, this movie is boring. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yes. they're used to, they're used to, I don't know, Avengers. No, I don't know. The Kung Fu genre, hand-to-hand fist fighting stuff is pretty big. I guess it just depends person to person. Because remember, one of the best movies in the MCU is um, Winter Soldier. And, like, Captain America doesn't do anything fantastical in that. Like, okay, he does, but you're just like, oh, this is, like, kind of tangible and real. Even yeah, though it's maybe, not, maybe a better like the example fact that he that took down one of a helicopter. But that's like, not the norm, though. Can you agree yeah. on that? Yeah. Like, I would argue. No, I'm saying it's not the norm. It's not yes. the norm, but it's not the norm because of how Hollywood operates. It, that's, it, what like, that's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Yeah, that's but I'm saying like when you when it comes to audiences, like for example, right? If we go to Deadpool one, it's the best of the Deadpool movies, and it's the most grounded of the Deadpool movies. Like, nothing crazy in Deadpool 1 really happens like that. We get to Deadpool 2, there's time travel, and people are like, oh, my gosh. We get to Deadpool 3, like, made money, and it's doing great, kind of, sort of. But, like, people are just like, this is not the tightest of stories or whatever the case is. Like, this is just making the money purely off of the nostalgia. So I'm saying for an audience... Uh, like especially I think nowadays audiences are kind of gravitating towards less noise but I think Hollywood is so stuck in its ways that that's why these blockbusters are the norm see I would agree with that but now Deadpool versus Wolverine was pretty noisy <laughs> you know it just didn't have a laser no, I understand beam. what I'm saying I understand I understand what I understand what you're saying but I'm saying that people are coming out to say that yeah I liked it because I like the actors be and, the, and the nostalgia Mm-hmm. And all of that stuff. Okay, yes. cool. Yeah. Like I like the actors and the nostalgia, but like they were like the story is. Um, no, definitely, it's definitely more irreverent than the. Okay, no, number two is still the worst one in my opinion, but um, I feel like what people are calling for, they're not getting, and they might not get, um, because uh, we'll have to see what. Because like, oh my god, have you guys seen the Marvel? No, I'm just saying like. Uh, no, I have not seen the Marvels. Well, you know, I've not seen anything Marvel related for a while. But like the point I'm saying is that for me, I think people nowadays are kind of gravitating towards let's let's take away some of this fancy stuff. I think like like for example, uh, Kim's background, Die Hard, right? Mm-hmm. I think if a Die Hard dropped right now and it was like marketed properly and you know it it did the things that it was supposed to do. No, actually, here's proof of that. Like stuff like John Wick, like John Wick. There's nothing. There's crazy stuff going on in there. But if you compare it to a superhero movie, like that's pretty standard, regular. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like the first one was really a hit, or yes. whatever. They kind of they kind of started losing it after the second and the third and uh, the fourth and and he's apparently he's coming back. But anyway, point being that, um, what's this? Yeah, I think when there's, like, less bells and whistles is kind of what uh, people are hoping for in their movies. I mean, perfect example. The new Spider-Man 4, it's supposed to be another multiverse story, and Spider-Man fans are hating that idea. Yeah, so basically, yeah, uh, the less, less is more, guys. Uh that is true, that's kind of how people are feeling but yeah. i think because hollywood is stuck in its ways it's going to say more is more and that's that's why we get what we get now right like and a lot of the why... movies that we talk, a lot of the movies that we spoke about in this list they're not big bombastic blockbuster movies or whatever the case is they prioritize like the character and the story so you want your blockbuster but like if you can get some of that stuff in i mean even titanic as much as i don't feel it it's a blockbuster, and it has all of this scope and grandeur, but it prioritizes the story and the characters. This movie came out in 1973? Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, wrong show, but Kai. I went on a tangent. 
Um, no, it's all good. Uh, Rob, so th- does it belong on this list and does it belong? Uh, top 25. Top 50 to top, no, top 30 to top 25. Easy. Ooh. I can't believe how low it is. This is the Mount Rushmore of horror movies right here. Wow. Like, oh. Definitely, no question, no, no doubt. It's movies like this where I ask myself what happened to this lady after this film? Like, this actress, was she... Like, what happened to her career? Because, you know, people take this stuff very seriously, especially people in the faith. You know, how was she... Did, were they convinced that she was actually possessed? I mean, this is the 70s. You know what I mean? Like, no, she had to, like... Yeah. She's she not South African. To, like... If she was African, she'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> if she was African, she'd be in trouble. She'd have to go into hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they'd be fist fighting her at the grocery store. Dog. <laughs> Puma Madimon! Puma Sata! Puma Sata! <laughs> anyway. Uh, 